Hello. I think we are beginning. All right, so today we are going to do another day of permutations and combinations. Goodbye, Kevin. Um, so, all right. So first, I guess we can always talk about what is a permutation. Uh, so if we recall, you know, a permutation um, is a rearrangement, I guess, is the best way to say it. So we pick k elements out of n and ask how many ways we can arrange them so that order matters. Oh, does it? I uh, never update anything. Um, so, so that's what a permutation is. And so, for instance, if you want, yeah, it's actually Firefox, but whatever. So, basically, if you have like a hundred people uh, in a race. And we, we care about the first, I don't know, top five people. Um, we will consider it as P105, which if you remember, and this is why I'm going over this, is because it's part of this formula. It's 100 factorial divided by five factorial. I'm sorry, that's not right. Made a mistake immediately. Um, 100 minus 5 factorial. There we go. There we are. Yep, so this is equal to 100 factorial divided by 95 factorial, which is also just known as 100 times 99 times 98 times 97 times 96. So basically, either way. So if we think that P and K is n factorial over n minus k factorial. And then we look at this formula. What do we see? So we see a k combination, and, and the book uses the term a k combination. Uh, a lot of times you'll just see people saying um, combinations um, and not specify the k, but you know, I added it because the book did. So is a selection out of a set S where S has n elements. So we're going to pick k out of n. So basically that means if I give you a bag of, of candy and I say pick 10 things, um, then that would be, uh, you know, however many things in the bag, say there's 25 things in the bag and you pick 10. So that's what, um, that's what this symbol means. So a combination is selection um, out of a set. So really uh, a combination is actually, you can always think of it as a subset. Um, and so the number of permutations can be computed this way. And so the way that uh, I generally think about this formula is that it's essentially the permutation formula, except the permutation formula asks, how many ways can we pick k elements out of n elements and arrange them? And what this extra k factorial does here is it divides out by essentially a pkk. How many ways can we arrange k things, if we pick all k of them, the answer is k factorial. So basically what we're doing is we're doing a permutation, except now we're dividing by the number of possible orderings of the set that we care about. And because of that, uh, now we don't have any, we don't really care about the order of either our selection or the things that we didn't select. All we care about is whether something ended up in our group 
or something didn't end in a, up in our group. So that's really the question is, uh, did something end up as X inside A, which is our combination, or as X not in A, right? So there's only really two possibilities for that. So that's why, um, well, we'll see in the next slide. So, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so that, that's the definition of combination. And, and the thing to remember is that uh, permutation and combination definitely sound alike. What you have to remember about permutation is that order matters. And with combinations, order um, does not matter, is irrelevant. Okay, let's go on. So here's our first little example of <clears throat> how, uh, that's right, uh, combination is exactly the permutation formula with an extra k factorial in the denominator. Uh, in the book, this is in chapter uh, 9.3 and 9.4 on permutations uh, and combinations. Yep, it is chapter nine. Okay. So, uh, yeah, okay, right. So how many 16-bit strings uh, contain exactly seven ones? Um, from my experience, Kevin, no one reads textbooks, but maybe I'm wrong. At least back when I taught calculus, no one ever confessed to reading the book. So, all right, so what is, you know, what is a 16-bit string? And so I think the thing to think about when you, when you see uh, a 16-bit string, what we really mean is something on the, so here's an example. Oh, whoops, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay, cool. And so I usually write binary in these little uh, four blocks, so four bits. Um, there's actually a name for them. It's a uh, four bits per nibble. And so two nibbles makes a byte. And here's the second byte. And in 16 bit parlance, um, yeah, a nibble is four bits and a bit is either zero or one. So a bit is equal to so uh, and then two bytes is often called a word you'll see that occasionally when you deal with uh, maybe assembly language or 16-bit architectures or something like that not that many 16-bit architectures uh, exist anymore so eight bits eight bits is a byte. Yeah, a byte is two nibbles. Kind of makes sense, right? I mean, so let me just say that nibbles is not really a, a very commonly used term, uh, but I like it. It's kind of funny. So, okay. Well, okay, so this is an example of what such a thing is. Okay, so, um, all right, so what, what we want to do is compute how many of them are there. That was an idiot. Oh my god, yes. That is not a bird. <laughs> okay, sorry, that distracted me. Um, all right. Jesus. Okay. 
All right, but how many of them are there? So first, we want to compute two things. How many 16-bit words are there? And so the first answer to that is, yeah, you just have to ignore all the nonsense that goes on in the background. Um, so the first thing we want to compute is how many 16-bit words are there in total? And so the answer to that is each thing, right, each bit has two options. And there are overall 16 of them. So there's two to the 16th total. I know, um, total options. But now, the question that I have for you is how many of them contain exactly seven ones? And so the answer is going to be a combination. And so the question is, um, why, uh, why we need a combination for this? And the answer is basically this. If we number these bits, if we say that this is bit zero, bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And we want exactly seven ones. Then what that means is that we need to pick seven out of 16. That's right. And so what's the definition of picking seven, uh, seven things out of 16 things? The definition is 16 choose seven. Right, the combinatorial term. So basically, this is the answer. So there's two, two to the 16th power total, but there's 16 choose seven of them uh, that have exactly seven ones. So, okay. Um, in that case, let me calculate that. Sixteen choose seven is ah yes, so the answer is sixteen choose seven, which is equal to eleven thousand four hundred and forty. Yeah, so p sixteen seven would mean that we um, are doing a permutation. The reason why this is a combination is because I don't care what order you pick the things in to turn the light switches on. Um, yeah, so the way to think about it is I'm going to tell you to go into a room that has 16 switches and to turn seven of them on. And so what I want you to do is it doesn't really matter what order you turn the light switches on um, as long as you turn on seven out of the 16. Well, so here's a 16-bit string, and we want exactly seven to be... It's not 16 divided by seven. It's... it's uh, yeah, it's 16 choose 7. It's hard to write. Uh, you, if, if you're writing it in the chat, you can always write it as C 16 comma 7, and that'll differentiate it. Um, did I get? Yes, I did. And so uh, let's evaluate um, 16 choose 7. So 16 choose 7 is equal to, let me erase some of this stuff here so that I have room. Okay, so 16 choose 7 is um, 16 factorial over 7 factorial and then 16 minus 7 factorial. So 16 minus 7, as it turns out, um, is 16 factorial over 7 factorial times 9 factorial, which, I mean, if we want to write it all out, we can say 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 divided by 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And basically what I've done is I've canceled out the 16 factorial part of it, right? Like half canceled it. So 
Why is there an extra k factorial? Because that's the number of ways to divide out by the number of uh, orderings of seven things. So in a combination, order doesn't matter. So we have to divide by the number of total possible orderings where it does matter. And so that's the, basically we're dividing by, uh, we're saying like how many ways can you arrange 16 things? And then we divide by the number of arrangements of the first seven things and then the arrangements of the last nine things. And that's why we get a combination. Okay. So this slide got pretty, pretty wordy. Maybe I'll write this up in a more careful way later. It's also the definition, yes. Okay, so now how many 16-bit uh, strings contain at least three ones? Well, let's think about it. How many contain exactly three ones? No, we didn't actually need to compute the 2 to the 16th, but it's an important thing to know uh, that the number of possible binary words is 2 to the however long it is. So I, so I did it anyway. Um, yeah, so the answer is uh, 16 choose 3. Yes. Um, and so here's the thing. Um, now, what does at least 3 mean, right? At least 3 means, in this case, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 16, right? It stops at 16 because uh, there's only 16 bits that we can flip on. So 17 uh, doesn't make any sense. So, so the answer to this is actually kind of complex, right? Because what it is is at least three. So we need to add up 16 choose three plus 16 choose four plus 16 choose five plus blah, 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 plus 16 choose 16. Yep. So you can write them a little bit more compactly if you, if you would like this. If you would prefer to do that, you can always write it like this. Um, you don't have to. But it's always nice. Um, yeah, you can do summations if you want. So the difficulty with the summation is that it's actually, uh, right now you can't actually compute what the value of this thing is. Um, at least not without just evaluating all the terms and adding them. Um, mm, mm, good question. So, what's the alternative? And so someone already suggested it, but I'm going to pretend like you didn't. Um, so the alternative is we consider the complement. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is uh, if I say there is at least 3 and you know 3 goes from 3 to 16, then we can consider uh, 0, 1, and 2, those cases. So k is equal to 0, 1, and 2. Now, the question is what good does this, you know, what, what good is this? And so, ah, uh, thank you. Um, so the point is, if we add up 16 choose 0 plus 16 choose 1 plus uh, 16 choose 2, what we're going to get is not the answer. Uh, almost. That's if we're doing probability. The real question is, and this is why perhaps I might have cared to do this, how many total um, options are there for 16-bit words? So how many total? Uh, 
And the answer to that is 2 to the 16th power, right? Because we computed that in the previous slide. Yee. So, exactly. So what you do is you take 2 to the 16th, you make it nice and big, and then you put this minus sign here. Now, is this correct, as stated? Of course, it's a trick. If I ever ask that question, the answer is 95% of the time, no. But why is it not correct? Right. So it's not correct because we have to distribute. Right? We have to subtract all of these terms. Now, I don't care whether you keep the, the minus sign factored out and you kind of make yourself a nice little bracket around it, put extra parentheses or whatever. The point is that um, these are the two. So I guess the one thing to say is that these two numbers are the same, right? Uh, this, this summation here and 2 to the 16th minus this other summation here, uh, both are the same. I guess, I guess Beth is the same. Both is the same. Okay. Any questions or confusions about this so far? I think this is good, right? Um, we have to add up a bunch of stuff, but it's basically the same as the first problem. The first problem, the answer was just one of them. It was just 16 choose 7. And the reason why is because we only wanted exactly 7. But in this case, we want at least 3. Um, and so... Uh, here's the thing about uh, homeworks, quizzes, tests, etc. Uh, if you box this, uh, that is your answer. If you box this, well, maybe I'll, there we go. That is your answer. You don't need to evaluate all these terms. Um, if you want to, uh, you can use Wolfram Alpha to evaluate them. You can do whatever you like to evaluate them. But what I really care, I care uh, about the formulas. how it's all written out. Um, I'm going to say yes, maybe. Okay. So, let's go on. Let's do something else. <laughs> well, Kevin, as I am the person who is conducting this stream, I imagine that I am the first person to see the chats. Um, if, if there's replacement, if there's replacement, then it's neither a permutation nor a combination. It might be a permutation or combination with repetitions. Um, we'll talk about that more when we get to probability. Um, but yeah, so if it's, so combinations and permutations assume that if, if somebody is, if we're doing a, a race, for instance, uh, the reason why we don't have repetitions is because there's the person who finishes first doesn't then go back around and finish second and then third. Um, same thing. So, okay. So, how many of you have heard of poker? And by that I mean, how many of you have played at least one hand of poker in your lifetimes? Uh, it's a good question. Oh, KC, I'm impressed. Um, <clears throat> so, good, okay. Um, well, here's the thing. Um, who cares about the actual game of poker? All I care about right now is to ask this question. I want to know how many hands there are. So we're, we're going to play five card studs. So I know that Texas Hold'em was very popular uh, for a number of years and everybody stopped playing five card stud, um, but that's fine. Well, I mean, we're going to calculate the probabilities of most of some of the hands in poker if you want, that's fine. Um, okay, so basically, um, in order to do this, what do we do? We basically say, okay, there's 52 cards in a deck. And we pick without replacement.
And then we're going to say, does order matter, right? That's the, that's the question um, that we have to ask ourselves when we talk about permutations uh, versus combinations, right? Does order matter? And so um, the answer is, in poker, no. And the reason is because when you get your five cards, you're allowed to rearrange those cards in your hand and no one stops you, right? So order doesn't, like, if you draw a two first and then you draw a king and then you draw another two and then whatever, you can change the order of the cards as you pick them, right? You're not putting them back in the deck. You're holding them in your hand, but you're allowed to sort them as you as you please. So, so because the order doesn't matter, that tells us this is combination land, right? And so the thing about that is now the answer is actually pretty easy. The answer is this, and that's it. That's the number of hands in poker. Of course, you might ask, well, I don't know, I don't have a good grasp on how large this symbol is, right? This is just a symbol to me with some numbers inside of it. Um, I'd like to know actually how big it is, so maybe I'll write it out. So 52 times 51, times 50, times 49, times 48. It is big, but actually, surprisingly, um, not the not insanely huge. Um, I just want to make sure I get it right. It is 2,598,000. 960. Uh, yeah, so so if I ask you this on an exam, you box this as your answer. If I say evaluate the symbol, then you have to do like this. Um, on an exam, So yeah, 52 factorial. So what it is, you notice that this is not actually 52 factorial on top, right? This is 52 factorial with 47 factorial already canceled out. So this is equal to 52 factorial divided by 5 factorial, which happens to be the 120 here, times 47 factorial, which is which starts to cancel the other stuff out. Um, okay. So, is this a lot or a little? Is this more than you expected or fewer than you expected? I think, I think when I thought I saw this number the first time, actually, I think this is a lot fewer than I would, uh, than I than I uh, would have thought. So it's a small number compared to what I thought it was. But who knows? Um, you can disagree. You can say, oh, it's larger. Yeah, I mean, it's... Anyway, so if you care about the probabilities in poker, if you want to know how many blah, like, um, you know, how many pairs there are, how many three of a kinds, how many full houses, how many, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, we need to know this total number first, right? Because if we're going to compute the probability, you have to, you know, the probability of an event, and of course this is jumping ahead, a week or two or whatever, but I don't care. It's the number of elements in that event, assuming they're all equally likely, divided by the number of things in the sample space. So this is the number of things, whoops, I missed. It's the number of things in the sample space. So now that we have the denominator, we can go about dealing with other probabilities. So, okay, cool. No, everything that we're doing today is combinations. You see how here uh, we have a 5 factorial and a 47 factorial. So that means combination. At least I hope everything today is a combination.
except for the more fun stuff that I'm about to get to. Okay, so how many full houses are there, right? And so for those of you who don't know what po you know much about poker, basically a full house, you know, you get your five cards. So you can get, say, a three and another three, and then, say, a jack and a jack and a jack. So you need, you have to have a two of a kind, also known as a pair, I suppose. And a, yes, and a three of a kind, which for some reason is not known as a triplet. So, okay. So what are the kinds of choices? If I told you to go into a deck and pick out something of this form, where you have a pair and you have a three of a kind, then what are the choices you have to make? So what choices uh, do we have? Well, first we have to pick the type of card for the pair. And so what I mean by the type of card is I mean the thing in two, three, all the way up to 10, jack, queen, king, ace. So that's, yeah, so four of a kind should be called a nibble, but unfortunately, uh, they, they don't seem to do that for some reason. And then, after that, we have to pick the two suits, right? We have to pick two suits, like the colors, or what are the suits in poker? So you have the clubs, let's see how well I can draw. Clubs, uh, or I guess that's actually spades. Here's clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Yep, so we need to pick two suits out of four. And that's just for the pair. All right, and then <sighs> okay. Well, so the good news about this is that I don't expect you to know that much about uh yeah, so the dog will make appearances. There have been demands in 201 for my dog to make appearances. Uh, so next week, there will be dog time. Um, but this week, we are doing combinations, which is better in a way. Uh, my dog is an idiot. So, now we need the type of card for a th the three of a kind. And the last choice that we have to make is the three out of four suits. Of that um, three of a kind. Okay. All valid dogs are idiots. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Dogs are kind of tautological. Um, so, okay, so how do we compute this? Now that I have all four of the things we have to compute, um, that's, a, that's a bad brace. That's also bad, but it's better. Okay, so the first choice is we need to pick one out of 13, which is the number of types of cards there are. So we pick 13, choose one which is the number of, I mean, it's, it's hardly a combination. What is this number, right? What is 13 choose one? Well, you could compute it. You could say, I'm a pedant and I refuse to just think about it. I'm going to compute it out explicitly. So we get 13 factorial over one factorial, 12 factorial, which means we get 13, fact, uh, 13 times 12 times 11 uh, times 10 
all the way down to 1. And then here we're going to have 1 times 12 times 11, whoops, times 10, all the way down to 1. And then of course you say, well, all right, now just start canceling until all we're left with is a 13 divided by 1. So yes. But really, you got to think about it combinatorially. And the, what I mean by that is think about it in the sense that if I say out of 13 things, how many ways can you choose one of them? Then the answer is 13 because I'm saying pick one thing out of 13 things. So this, this, is, this is equal to 13, but it's also uh, just kind of, we should think about it in two ways. Okay, so now, that's right, so there are 13 types of cards. If you count these up, um, 2 through 10, I guess, gives you 9. And then Jack, Queen, King, Ace gives you an additional 4. So the size of this set is 13. Okay, and so now you need to pick two suits out of four. So out of four things, choose two things. That's pretty easy. Um, okay. Now we have to pick the type of card for a three of a kind. And in that case, we've already picked one of the cards here. So we can't pick whatever type was picked here because there, there's not five threes in a deck. So basically we have to pick something else. So if we're gonna pick something else, there's only 12 options left, pick one. And then finally we have to pick four, out of the four suits, we have to pick three. And here we are. That's it. So I'm picking cards. Yes, they're all multiplied together. They're all multiplied together. So here, um, this is 13. Four choose two happens to be six. 12 choose 1 happens to be 12. 4 choose 3 happens to be 4. Why? So you can hit this with the combinatorial formula, or you can think about it. If you're picking four things, uh, if you pick four, I'm sorry, if you pick three things out of four things, Is that the same thing as picking one thing? And the answer is yeah. Because basically what you're able to say is that if you pick three things out of four things, it's the same thing as picking one thing out of four things because if I put aside three things, that's the same thing as choosing three things out of four things. If I pick one thing, it's the same thing as picking one thing and throwing it out. So, and you can check it. The formula is symmetric, by which I mean that n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. In fact, I think that's a good homework problem to prove that. I was going to do it uh, here, but I, I think it's a better homework problem than, um, you know, I think, it, I think it'll make a good learning experience. So yeah, I'll have you guys prove that. Thank you, Kevin. Um, okay, so the question is, what is this number? The answer is uh, times 12 times 6. So this number in total is uh, 3744. Four. And then if we divide that, now this is not the number of uh, full houses. If we want to know the probability of them, and we divide by uh, 2598960, we get the probability of a full house. is equal to approximately uh, 0 
one, four, four. So it's not 52 cards because we're, if you look at this, 13 times four is 52. And so what I'm doing is I'm splitting up the type of choice that I'm making. So I'm, I'm saying I'm gonna pick the type of card first and then I'm gonna pick the suits. And when I divide the choice like that, first it's a, it's a matter of picking one type of card out of 13. And once I do that, then basically I pull those four cards out of the deck and then out of those, I have to pick two or three in this case. Okay, so, so it's a very small probability actually of a full house, only about maybe what, one in 800, approximately one in 700 hands should give you a full house if everything's perfectly random. Okay. So this, this is actually a hard question. Or this is harder, I should say. So a full house, um, a full house is actually easier to compute than pairs. And here's why. Because with a, if I just say you get a pair, then what have I told you? I've told you that you have two cards that match. But if in poker, if I say that you have a pair, let's say you have a pair of queens, right? This will be the queen of diamonds. This will be the queen of, I don't know. There we go. So the, the problem is that this is not what describes a poker hand. If a poker hand is five cards, then the problem is that this only describes two of the cards. So if you if you were thinking, and it's not a bad thought, that you could do basically the same thing. You say 13, 13 choose one, and then out of the four pairs, or I'm sorry, out of the four suits, you pick two. So this is the number of pairs, but this is only the number of pairs if you draw two cards only. it's two of the same number, not two of the same suit. So you see here how the this, these are two queens. Uh, one is a diamond and one is a club or whatever. So the reason why it's difficult is you have to remember to choose the rest of the cards. So how do we pick the rest of the cards, right? That's a good question. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, how many types of cards are left? 12. And how many do we pick? So here's the thing. We have to pick, well, how many do we have to pick? I guess that's a good question. I can wait for a few seconds while you guys s spam me with the answer. I'll take a drink of my gamer juice. So you want five cards total. You've picked two of them already. <laughs> oh man. I feel like I'm about to get trolled here. Or I feel like trolling is currently very good. Very good. Okay, so you have to pick three cards. Well, so if you only have two cards, then you're done. This is, if you only have to pick two cards, then you're done. But if you have, say, five cards in your hand, then the number of pairs is actually, the number of times you can pick a pair 
uh, times the number of times that you can pick basically three more cards that are not pairs or not anything. So, so basically we have to pick the rest of the hand. And so, okay, here's a question then. How many ways can we pick the suits? So we picked suits in the last part. So here we picked out of the four suits for this type, we picked two. But now we're picking three separate cards, right? So for each card, we have four choices. So we have a, I mean, if, if you really want to, you can write a four choose one. And I'm just going to write four choose one cubed. Well, if you get a two pairs of queens, then what is that called? If you get a two times two pairs, and it's the same type, then that would be a four of a kind, right? And then, of course, you need something else. So you can also get two pairs. But this we're assuming we're not getting two pairs. We can compute the probability of two pairs next, but this is not two pairs. This is specifically, yeah. <laughs> okay, everything is now, I should not have told you guys that word. Um, yes, this is specifically just one pair. Because technically you could say, oh, well, a full house is a pair, right? Because a full house has a two of a kind and it has a three of a kind. So actually, um, you know, a two of a kind and a three of a kind is a pair, right? Except for the fact that that's also a full house and so we don't want to consider it as just a pair. So here is how many pairs there are. So let's compute, uh, let's compute the number. So 13 times six times Okay, now we actually have to compute 12 choose 3, so 12 times 11 times 10 divided by 6 times uh, 64. Okay, so as it turns out, this number is 13, uh, this number is 6, this number is 12 times 11 times 10. Come on. Divided by 6, this number here Four choose one is four. Uh, the, the four pick one is raised to the third power because we have to pick three cards. And so each card gets its own suit, right? Each card has a suit. And we have to select each card's suit. So this was just a shorthand way of writing uh, four choose one times four choose one. For the second card, right? This is the first card, this is the second card, this is the third card, and four choose one. And so basically, uh, yeah, so single pairs, barring any other combinations, um, yeah, so this discounts any other combinations. This discounts four of a kinds, full houses, all things other than just exactly one pair. Uh, are we calculating probability? Not yet. So Here we're just calculating the number of ways. So the number of ways is this, um, which I've pre-computed. Which is 1,098,240. And so when I computed this last night, I was actually kind of surprised. Um, I, I forgot that the probability of a pair was so high, right? Because we know that there's about 2.6 million hands, and this is approximately 1.1 million. So if we just do a quick estimation, well, I guess we can actually compute the true number, because I think it's slightly different, and that confuses me. Yeah, oh, okay, it's the same. So it's approximately, I thought it was 44%, but that's just because I was, it's approximately 42%. So there's 40, so what we should say is that there's 1,098,240 different hands, 
different five card hands. Where the best thing is a pair. That's right. This is exactly the number that contain, this is the number of hands in five card stud or five, any five card poker game, I guess, that has exactly a pair but nothing else, right? Exactly one pair but nothing else. So if you want to compute the probability of two pairs, that's a different calculation, right? And the probability of four of a kind is a different calculation, et cetera, et cetera. So this does not contain, you're correct, this does not cover all hands that contain a pair. Because if you think about it, a three of a kind contains a pair. A four of a kind contains one or two different pairs, depending on how you think about it. A full house contains two or three different pairs, depending on how you count. So that's why I'm saying this is exactly only a, a hand where you get a pair and nothing else. Nothing else. So, okay. All right. Cool. Wasn't that fun? Uh, yeah, so if you dealt people uh, that uh, 1,098,240 times, and every time they got a pair, theoretically, they could get a different hand every time. Um, yeah. Cool. So, all right. So I want to talk about this thing called a derangement. And the reason why I want to talk about derangements is because they are a lot of fun. So the 42% basically just comes from the 1.1 million divided by 2.6 million, which is the total number of hands that we have. Yeah. Okay. So it's fun because it's a permutation where no one gets to go back to the seat where they came from. So in a, in a regular permutation, for instance, if I write all, all the permutations of 1, 2, 3 out, we got 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. Those are all the permutations of the elements 1, 2, 3. Well, those are not derangements, right? A derangement is a permutation where none of the elements go back into their original position. Exactly. It's musical chairs, except... I think in musical chairs you're allowed to, if you end up right back where you started, I know they remove a chair, but you're allowed to sit back where you started. Here, no one can sit where they started. So uh, it would be an even better game of musical chairs because it's uh, it would cause absolute catastrophe. Um, okay, so let's look at the things that are not. So this is, let me, oh, you know what? There we go. This is not a derangement because everything is in the same spot. These two have flipped, but one is in its, its correct position, so that's not a derangement. Two is out of place, three is out of place, one is out of place. So this one is a derangement. Two, three, one. Two, one, three, on the other hand. Three. Calc 2 is fun. Anyway. Um, and then finally, uh, 3, 2, 1. 2 is in its place. And so here, the only reason why I have to defend Calculus 2 is because I taught it for a number of years. So, you know, that's how it goes. 
Cool. All right. So we see that actually D3 is equal to 2. And so what that means is that um, the number of ways to take three people in three chairs and to move them around so no one sits in the same spot is two ways. So as it turns out, um, there, this formula does actually apply to zero. So D0, you always have to be a little bit concerned about zero cases because what does it mean to derange nothing? To not, um, you know, to not move around anything, but you start with nothing. And so the answer to that is we just apply this formula here and we say, well, zero factorial happens to be one. And then we see that here's the one factorial for the n equals one. This number here is actually for the n equals zero case. And so because of that, this is just zero factorial times one, which is one. And then for instance, D1 is equal to one factorial times one minus one. And now here's the reason why it's a little wonky. The number of derangements of, no, uh, of zero things is one, but the number of derangements of one thing is zero, or six, I guess. Let's do a better zero. There. But why is it zero? Well, if you think about it, you know, you have, how are derangements used outside of theoretical math? Oh, good question. It's a, I mean, it basically the question is like any combinatorial question, we can just make it musical chairs and then, uh, and then we have a, a practical application. But uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm not teaching them because they are practical. I'm teaching them because they are. So, um, yeah, so let's compute D2. So if you have like one dude sitting in one chair, and that dude cannot go back to his original chair, then that's why D1 has to be zero. There's no way to take Mr. Dude or Mrs. Dude and, uh, and to throw them back into their original position, uh, position. So, okay. Uh, and then here, if we apply the formula, you get two factorial times one minus one plus one half. So as it turns out, this is all just equal to one if you compute this. So how's there a way to arrange uh, zero dudes? The answer is we have, um, yeah, just move them to the left. Uh, this one is, is kind of a philosophical, uh, philosophical question, right? This is the notion of, uh, when I ask you, how many ways can you rearrange zero things such that nothing goes back in its original position? The answer is one way, and you ask me, what do I do? And the answer is do nothing, right? So that's that's kind of how, uh, but uh, again, it's, it's if, if, if this bothers you, you can just take it as a definition. That's right. You see how this n here has to stop wherever we stop. So this is dn for n is bigger than three. If the equation is n is equal to two, for instance, then you cut it off here. If it's n equals three, you cut it off here. It's just how the, the formula is, is supposed to be interpreted. Um, and so there's one way to derange two people. And the good news is if you have person A and person B, then clearly, I think everybody can see, 
there is ba, which is the correct arrangement, and then there's ab, which is not a derangement. So that's why there are two ways to, to permute people. The first permutation is the do nothing permutation. The second permutation is the flip permutation, right? So this is flip and this is no op, right? And so the, the issue here is that, um, oh, what should I say about this? I don't know. I think, I, I think I've, to quote Biden, I think I've said enough. Okay, on that topic. So let's apply it a little bit. Let's see what the next thing is. If you have nothing to rearrange, one thing like that. But if you did nothing to rearrange one thing, then that thing stays in its position, and that's not a derangement, right? I'm always running for Senate, man. It's a crazy life. How important is this topic? Well, given that uh, you've asked the question, I will make it extremely important and put 10 questions on the exam. Oh, Jesus. So, um, okay. So seven people go to a party. Now, of course, you should not go to a party anymore. There are no parties. But back in the, oh my lord, but back in the uh, distance uh, past when, when parties existed and you used to go to them, um, some people used to wear hats, you see. And so everybody checks their hat at the door. And we all get mega drunk. And so we stumble out of the party at the end, uh, completely unable to determine whether or not we've been given our own hat. So how many ways can we just randomly give people's hats back? So, oh, that's true. I, I, I know that uh, from experience, UMBC students. Uh, anyway. Well, the good news is that you are now equal partiers to all good people. So, all right. So what do we do here? We want to randomly give them back. So the first question is, um, what happens when we randomly give things back? So basically, we're going to have, let's just write out the slots. So we have seven slots and we have seven people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so, um, the point is, here's the first person. They come up and they ask, give me a hat, right? And so they are given one of seven hats. So there's seven choices here. Well, how many choices do we have now, right? We only have six choices for the next hat. Five, four, three, two and one. So what is this thing known as? What, what have I just written out here? If I multiply all of these together, what, what formula is it that I've just written out? That's right. That is seven factorial. You can also write it as P seven, seven. So, we would probably call this a permutation, right? Excellent. So, what about the next one? So, the next one is a little weird, right? No person gets their hat back. And then you say to, you say to yourself, Okay, well, I must have lied then. So anyway, um, so if no one gets their hat back, then actually 
you can answer this question really, 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 really easily. All you have to do is say, this is the perfect time to write D7, right? This is the perfect time to just say it's the number of ways to derange seven people. Cool. Now, if we actually care about what D7 is, no, I, I think I did say that almost everything is going to be a, 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 per, a combination, but forgive me. This was the easy part, you know. You know, this is the easy part of the first question, so that so just so that we can all, you know, do things. So, what if at least one person gets their hat back? Well, as it turns out, we already have the answer partially written out here. And I want you guys to think about why we have the answer written out. Like, where, like, if, if we combine these two answers, how do we do that? I've upgraded to ultra low latency, so hopefully there is less time between when I say something and when I get responses. Nice. So I want at least one person to get their hat back. So what's the opposite of that? What's the opposite of at least one person getting their hat back? If I say one person, two people, three people, right, that's at least one person. So at least one person is one or more up to seven. That's true. If, if I've stumped everybody, then uh, I'll just have to wait infinitely. Um, no one gets hats back. Blah. No one getting hats back is D seven. Good, good. So here's the number of ways, right? You agree? Everybody agrees that the number of ways that one uh, that that we just randomly give hats back. So some people could or could not get their hats, right? Seven factorial. This doesn't care. Some people might get their hats. Other people might not. Whatever. D7, on the other hand, is specifically saying that no one gets their hats. So this is like the total, right? And this is specifically no one. Well, this is someone. So my, uh, my contention, I contend, I assert. that, ah, there we go. Now we're starting to hit on it, right? That the opposite, so uh, someone complement is equal to no one. And so if I wanna know the probability that at least one person gets their hat back, I already know the probability that no one does. And so it's really just the total minus no one getting their hat back. So this is this is the answer to three. Okay. It's D7 because D7 is the number of ways to derange seven people so that, right, so this is all the ways, all ways, minus no one, right? So all the ways minus no one is equal to someone, right? I guess you can also flip the complement. You can say that the complement of no one is someone. So cool, right? This is a this is kind of a beautiful formula that you can write. Um, and I, I Derangement means that no one gets back to their original position. Just to say it again. Okay, so now here's the hard one. 
oh, this is uh, this is the pro or not the probability. This is the number of ways that at least one. So this could be two people. It could be one person. It could be two people. It could be three people, all the way up to seven. The only thing we know is that it's not uh, zero. At least two people get their hats back. So I think it's a little more complicated than that, unfortunately. So the number of ways that two people get their hats back, right, is that, and then here's where combinations come in. So my hint is um, uh, use a combination. Use C and D, put them together. So here we put together pro, uh, permutations and derangements. And here we're going to put together combinations and derangements. So what the idea that I had at least is that what I would do is out of the seven people, I would count the number of ways to pick two people to get their hats back, right? So this says, um, two people get their hats back times d5. So get rid of this at least and just say exactly for a second. So this is the answer to exactly, right? Because it's the number of ways that out of seven things we pick two things, those two things will get, or those two, I guess, people will get their hats back. And then D5 means that those five people will not. Right? So that's what this means. But now if we want at least two, what does at least two mean in this case? Right? At least two. It means two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it means all of those possibilities. So really, now we have to do all the rest of them. So now we say three people get their hats back times D4. Four people don't or four people get their hats back and three don't or five people get their hats back and two don't or six people get their hats back and one doesn't and what do we know about d1 we know D1 is zero, so this whole term drops out, but we don't really care. We can just write it because it makes the whole thing symmetric. And then everybody gets their hats back times D0. I'll have to think about that. I, th I don't think that works. So the question is, it, uh, does uh, seven factorial uh, minus uh, d7 seven minus 7 choose 1 work. It uh, does. It does if you are willing to do this. So I was about to say that you were full of crap, but as it turns out, you were 80% right. And so, yeah, if you add a d6 to the end of your answer and you multiply that by the 7 choose 1, then actually that is the same thing. That gets you to the same place. Oh, do you want to make this a summation? Beautiful, beautiful. Mm, 
I like summations, they're great. Seven choose I, D seven minus I, or I equals two to seven. There we go. So you can just make that into that summation and that's fine. All right, let's see. Ah, uh, this one's a good one. I'll get to this one next time and then we'll do other things. I think we'll probably start and do the rest of these later. Oh Lord, uh, okay. All right, so in terms of uh, administrative things, what should I say? Let's just write here. Um, I still got to figure out how we're going to do uh, exams. That's, uh, that's on me. Um, the other thing I need to do is get you the office hour invitation. And hopefully I'll send that out sometime tonight. So I think that's basically, I think those are the two things that we have to do. And then I have to send out the homework. Uh, and well, I'm, I'm kind of writing my to-do list. I'm also writing the things that I want you guys to be aware that I am working on. So. Um, you know, so the new homework should come out tonight as well. And so, um, now that I've basically covered what I've covered, um, I think we all know pretty much what the homework should be, right? What time am I going to release the homework? No idea. Probably late. Um... Okay, don't make it killer. I'll make a special one just for you. All right. <laughs> um, there was no homework due today. Uh, otherwise I would have had to assign it over spring break and I certainly didn't do that. Um, so, the, so office hour times are going to essentially be whenever I am sitting at my computer and online and feel like taking a question. So you guys can just join my, my Discord chat when I get all that up and running. And if I answer your question, then I am there. And if I am uh, busy with something else or lazy, then I will ignore you for a while. So I'll try to, I'll try to stick to my uh, office hours um, during the days, but at night um, I will claim some personal time. All right, I think that's it for today. I'm happy to see that everybody was participatory. I mean, in a way, this is this is a good class. I mean, yeah, I, I do need someone. Oh God, this is uh, exactly, exactly. All of these things, there's so many little memes coming up uh, too quickly. Uh, I do need an outro um, and I don't have uh, any any uh, Patreon or anything to hawk, so uh, so that's good. I guess your tutor your tuition money is 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 basically Patreon for me. All right, um, that's it. <laughs> All right, people, signing off. <laughs>